The Verdict, a sidebar production, hosted by Kent Myers and Mick Cornett. As a part of its traditional and continuing commitment to public and community service, Crow and Dunleavy sponsors The Verdict. Also sponsored by Delta Dental, Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, and C.H. Guernsey and Company. Each week on The Verdict, we present an objective discussion of contemporary and legal issues, topical issues that will affect Oklahomans in their daily lives. The Verdict, a sidebar production. And welcome to The Verdict. I'm Mick Cornett, and joined on this show, as always, by one of Oklahoma's top legal experts, Kent Myers. And Kent, today, a topic that may not have been in the headlines a whole lot lately, but still very much on the back burner. Yes, uh, something very important to yeah. uh, all Oklahomans, and that is the subject that we talked about in our very first show on The Verdict, and that is the trial of Terry Nichols, should it take place again. And we're bringing back uh, the two guests that were on the very first Verdict show to, to discuss that issue. Uh, from the standpoint of new developments. And let me just tell you a couple of the new developments. Of course, we have a new district attorney. Uh, Wes Lane has taken over from Bob Macy and has reaffirmed his commitment, uh, as was uh, Bob Macy's commitment, to uh, retry Terry Nichols. Uh, moreover, the United States Supreme Court has recently turned down what is allegedly uh, Terry Nichols' last possible appeal to get the uh, Supreme Court interested in the case to turn around the sentence which is life without parole in the federal system. And most recently has been the controversy uh, now in front of the Oklahoma Supreme Court on the funding for the Terry Nichols defense. A very, very difficult thing if you promise, a, if, you, if the Constitution promises a defendant a defense and then the state doesn't uh, afford that defense or cannot afford it, what do you do then? So there are some new issues that we haven't talked about before. Uh, we will be asking our reviewers uh, when they see this show, after the show is over, to get on our website uh, and tell us whether or not they think Terry Nichols ought to be retried or not under all circumstances. So we'll be asking for the uh, viewers' verdict. Should Terry Nichols be tried by the state of Oklahoma? We'll present opposing views. We'll be right back on the verdict. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. The Verdict is pleased to have as a sponsor C.H. Guernsey and Company, providing architectural and engineering services to clients throughout the U.S. and around the world. And Blankenship has stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Leading it fourth and seven on the Tiger 46-yard line. 38 seconds on the clock. The Tigers have no choice but to go. Wiggins ended his kicking. Here's the snap. And the kick is away. All children deserve a life of hope and love. But sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all of the quality assistance and representation that can be offered in our legal system. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children has over 350 of the best attorneys and volunteers in Oklahoma County who donate their time and services to represent children. For more information, call 405-23-CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. American Express Tax and Business Services. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. American Express Tax and Business Services. In Oklahoma City, the phone number is 405-843-5311. Arts education builds brain power. With it, children learn faster, test higher, and go further. 
But in many Oklahoma schools, the arts have all but disappeared. Now you can help with 500 ways to arts power our schools, our teachers, our future. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers is going to introduce our guests. Well, we're, we're talking already <laughs> with the two guests that we're pleased to welcome back. They are our two original first guests on The Verdict show. Look what they started. Look what they started, <laughs> and they're back to do it again by popular demand, I might add. Uh, on my left across the table is uh, John Coyle III. John is a 28-year lawyer, uh, does both criminal defense and civil practice is an Oklahoma City native, a graduate of Oklahoma City University with a BA and his law degree. Uh, John's listed in a book that uh, is worth mentioning. He's listed in Best Lawyers in America. That's not oh. something you pay to get in. That's something that other lawyers say you ought to be in. And he's listed in the criminal defense category in Best Lawyers in America. He's also uh, the recipient of the Clarence Darrow Award, which is given to the lawyer named the Outstanding Criminal Defense Lawyer in the state of Oklahoma. And uh, John is re returning for what is really uh, his fourth uh, visit to the verdict. Thank you for coming back. No, I'm glad to be here. This is interesting. Well, <laughs> uh, we're pleased to have you back. On my right is State Rep <clears throat> Representative John Nance. Uh, John Nance is a native of Oklahoma City also. Uh, got his education at the University of Central Oklahoma, both a Bachelor of Science and a Master's in Business Administration. Is a retired uh, federal agent. He uh, did a lot of investigative work while he was a, a federal agent and is currently serving in an elective capacity as a, a Republican member of the Oklahoma House of Representatives and has been uh, occupying that position since 1999. As a matter of fact, we'll return to the legislature uh, this next session not having drawn an opponent. That's correct. Which shows how, how much good you're doing out <clears> Well, <throat> I hope so. Uh, he is vice chairman of the Small Business Committee, <clears throat> and John is making his third appearance on the verdict. John, welcome back. Thank you very much. Appreciate the invitation. Uh, we're cordial. We like each other, but we've got a somber topic. Mm -hmm. We've got a topic of Terry Nichols' trial. Should he be tried again in Oklahoma? Uh, it's something that we visited, as I indicated, on our very, very first show in April of 2001. But several things have happened, and I want to get our guest view on whether they make a uh, whether those events make a difference in whether the trial ought to take place. Of course, one major difference is that Tim McVeigh now has been executed. Uh, he is uh, his execution took place uh, basically on schedule. Uh, let me ask you guys, does that make a difference in your view, uh, starting with you, John Nance, in whether or not uh, Terry Nichols ought to be put in jeopardy of the death penalty now that one person has been executed? My feelings are that justice was served when Tim McVeigh was executed, and I believe that the state of Oklahoma uh, reserves the right to do the same test for uh, Terry Nichols. Well, John, we probably have the right to do it, but uh, the might and we have the right uh, but it's not the right thing to do under the circumstances of this case. We don't need to bring this up again to put the people of Oklahoma through the heartache and the time that this is going to take. There are well, I, I disagree very that, few people that want to do it. Uh, uh, part of the issue when, uh, when Mr. Macy uh, stepped down as a district attorney and when Wes Lane came in, he met with a bunch of the bombing victims, and of course there, there are two different categories there. Some don't want it, some do. But part of the reason why he decided to go ahead and do the prosecution on Terry Nichols because he was convinced of those who wanted him to be tried by the 160 deaths that have yet to be uh, tried. Well, let me ask you this. There's another thing that has happened, and it's been widely reported in the press, and that is that what has been characterized as the last appeal right uh, for uh, Terry Nichols to the U.S. Supreme Court has now been exhausted. And apparently, as final as it can ever be, his federal sentence of life without parole in the federal system is now in concrete. I mean, it's just not going to change. Does that make a difference, John? He's not going to get out. I still believe that the 160 people who have not had justice in the court system deserve that right, and it should be tried in Oklahoma for those deaths. Does that 
difference, make any difference to you? Oh, and, and, well, it ought to make an enormous difference to everybody. The, it's final. And life without parole in the federal system means just that. And Terry Nichols uh, will be locked up uh, for the rest of his natural life in a federal prison. That is very important, and that is justice. The fact that uh, he's not being executed for whatever role he had to play in the bombing uh, doesn't, how is that, uh, how to take another life, how is that going to teach people uh, not to take someone's life? The, uh, the death penalty well, isn't down, hadn't made murder rate go down one bit. That's the only part of the crime rate still up. <laughs> well, of course, I disagree again. Uh, the thing is, uh, we don't know that he's going to get the death penalty, number one. That's a presumption you're making. And number two, we still have 160 people who have not had a fair trial for the deaths that they suffered and those families that have suffered from that. Plus, well, I think it sends a, especially in light of 9-11, are we going to avoid prosecution on people we might find that are convicted, say, in some other nation for some other crime or related crime? We're not crime? talking about some other nation. I know John. we're, we're not, talking about we're Oklahoma send... spending millions of dollars to lock somebody up that's already locked up and the federal government's paying for it. It, it doesn't make a bit of sense. It's well, not the federal justice. government doesn't have any money. It comes from taxpayers. So it's whether it's Oklahoma taxpayers or, or uh, the universal taxpayers of the United States, we're still going to pay for it regardless. Well, it's and, a lot and, and the question you know. of millions, uh, that that to me, uh, I think, was highly exaggerated in the uh, in the campaign uh, with Mickey Holmes, Holmesy, who said that it was twenty million dollars. I've asked people, where did he get that twenty million dollars? Apparently that was just a figure out of the air because no one has come Even up with Even more that. than the money, the cost, the bringing up of things that happened seven years ago, the, the going through things, not only for the people who were involved in the bombing and the small percentage of the victims who are vocal, who still want this, yeah. and certainly want can consider that to be some sort of justice. But why in the world would we pay for a trial to, to have Oklahoma lock him up too, assuming that I'm presuming he'd get the death penalty. Let me uh, jump in here. And, what if okay. he didn't? Give Mr. Nance a chance to respond. We'll be right back. We're talking to John Coyle and John Nance about an Oklahoma trial for Terry Nichols. We'll be right back. For Crow and Dunleavy, I've both given and received. I've given my daughter an associate, and I've also received Cohen Dunleavy legal services. I think Carrie's a pretty capable person, and the legal services I receive have been first rate. But what most impresses me about Cohen Dunleavy is its long term commitment to the state and to the community. Service is everything to the law firm, a full service firm of outstanding, integrity filled people. Happy birthday, Cohen Dunleavy. Have another 100 years of great success. I want to congratulate Pro Dunleavy not just for reaching this wonderful milestone of its 100th anniversary, but for establishing during that 100 years the highest standards of integrity and, and professionalism and dedicated public service that's really set the mold and set the standard for law practitioners throughout the state of Oklahoma and throughout the nation. We are C.H. Guernsey & Company. We provide engineering, architecture, and consulting services to clients across the nation and around the world. Our corporate headquarters are located in Oklahoma City, and we have branch offices across the country, including Tulsa. We have provided quality service to clients for nearly 75 years. At Guernsey, we believe in quality work and unconditional client satisfaction. To learn more about C.H. Guernsey & Company, log on to our website at chguernsey.com. St. Gregory's University has been changing the lives of people like me for 125 years. Affordable, private Catholic education, balanced with dedication to community and service, makes St. Gregory special. We're extremely proud of our students' outstanding academic achievements and our nationally ranked athletic teams. It's when you help a student build a future of balance, integrity, and service that you change a life forever. St. Gregory's, a community for life.
Mick Cornett, Kent Myers, and our special guest on The Verdict. We're talking with John Nance and John Coyle about a possible trial in uh, Oklahoma for Terry Nichols. And, uh, John, you were wanting to respond to uh, the other John's uh, question about Terry Nichols. And even if he were found guilty, he couldn't serve two terms simultaneously in different places. Well, that's true. But we have not had a jury in Oklahoma who have heard the facts on 160 people who have died based on the charges that they, wanted, that they filed against him. And I think that's what we ought to do. Well, John Coyle, let me ask you, if we do have a trial based upon what you know now about the evidence uh, and the facts and the charges, how long would a trial take? Well, it it takes several months to be able to put on and go through all the evidence. Uh, certainly the trial of Tim McVeigh took a long time and Terry Nichols' trial in Denver took a long time and, and uh, it, it'd take several months in any event. And where should it be? Well, the Tenth Circuit has already ruled that they couldn't get a fair trial in Oklahoma the first time. So if Terry Nichols was convicted here in Oklahoma, it would eventually end up back in the federal court in our system of justice. And then it would come back for another trial because we'd have to find somewhere out of state where maybe they could be tried. We can have a state trial out of the state? I, I've never seen one. I don't I, know how I, we could. I don't think you can. But, but the I court's already real. We can't I have I disagree with your presumption there. It's been seven years, roughly. We have Tinkerfield, we have FAA, we have General Motors, and a lot of other things. I think our population has probably rotated to the point that you could set a jury, maybe even in Oklahoma City, that the venue could be established there based on people that weren't here or that it maybe have even grown up that weren't that impressed with what happened in the tragedy of the Murrah building. So I think then you might be here. And the time, uh, you know, they've got the transcripts from the federal trial. How long is it going to take to go over what the charges are and come up with a defense? I don't see it being a long problem Years myself. Years to prepare it and months and months to try it. Why? There's hundreds of witnesses involved in it as to all the events. There are... Well... Um, the apparently, apparently the, the prosecution people. has been ready for two years. They've told me they're ready to go to trial. And here we sit, we haven't even had a preliminary hearing. So my impression is we've got a three-legged stool here. We've got the prosecution, we have the judge, and we have the defense. The prosecution's ready. The judge apparently can do whatever he can do within the law. And the defense seems to be the foot dragger. And my opinion is that we well, need to move along and get this thing under the, underway. Well, well, they're not going to move along, can he? They don't even pay the lawyers. Well, he doesn't have you a know, contract uh, right now, John. That's been ruled well, void. And I have, a, I have an offer from two excellent, and I'm sure you would agree. This is a letter from Irvin Box to Judge uh, Ray Dean Linder. He has offered himself and uh, John uh, Albert at $500,000 apiece plus expenses and they would take the case immediately and as far as I'm concerned that's what we ought to do. Well let's talk about cost. Let's, uh, let's focus in on that and in relation to the state's situation right now. The state legislature provided some money for the defense and then after the May 3rd tornado turned around and I guess and withdrew it. $900,000. That's true. Uh, <clears throat> is it worth the cost? John. What price can you put on justice? I mean, if it were 10 people, uh, we've, had, we've had thousands killed now in the World Trade Center. Are we going to establish a policy that if it costs too much, we're just going to ignore it? Well, what uh, if the we situation that. were that to try Terry Nichols would mean that we would have to dismiss 160 other cases and not try them because we don't have the cost? Well, what if there just isn't enough money to go around? Well, you know the source of the, the, the court fund is not tax money. It's money that comes from fees and surrendered money and that sort of and thing. And that's what's been used that's to pay what's been defense used, costs. And, and there's no reason to believe that that's going to be reduced. It's not tax money. Oh, it, it's going to completely change the way that where, wherever they have the trial, first of all, the security alone will cost millions of dollars. The security for wherever we uh, have this supposed trial, if they can get a fair trial, and if he can get a fair trial in Oklahoma, which, which I contend he still can't, I think the federal court will find that, they have before, um, and it, it's going to cost millions there, and who's to think the, legislator, the, the, the legislature's not going to stiff the lawyers again like they did uh, not, and not try to pay them? 
They're not. It, now, it's, it's millions of dollars wait a minute, that wait it's going to cost for this trial. Based on what? I've talked to the sheriff. He has had him for two years. It's cost him around $350,000 to keep him in the jail. And every time he moves him to a hearing or something, it takes several officers to do that. That's because they have the hearings in the jail. That's now. correct. That's they're not correct. Gonna, they, they, but it's going to be a secured trial. area. It will be a secured area. They're going to have the trial. Uh, there isn't any way they can have the trial in Oklahoma County. Now, anybody's going to agree on well, that. Well, I've, I've uh, talked to several people that don't see that as too far-fetched. Well, let me, well, let me, I, I, let me I butt in here a minute bizarre. and focus on defense costs. Not costs of the uh, district attorney or, any, or the, the sheriff or anything, just defense costs. Thus far, the defense has been paid, according to the public records, $1.7 million. That's correct. Uh, there's still 400000 owing that has not been paid, and we're not to a preliminary hearing yet. How much is this defense going to cost if we continue paying at the rate that has gone on thus far uh, it, to go through a several week at least preliminary hearing and then perhaps a several month trial? September 25th, Oklahoma, Nichols' attorney says he may quit. Let him quit. We've got two experts who have a lot of experience, much more than Mr. Hermanson, in death penalty cases who are willing to do it for a million dollars. Let me jump in here, and because I want to give each of you a chance to kind of sum up your, your feelings on this view. We've got about 45 seconds for each of you. Mr. Coyle, would you like to go first? Well, I think that uh, to, to have this trial is, is really not justice for anyone in Oklahoma. It'll cost undoubtedly millions of dollars of money. We can't fund the schools that we have now. They're all falling down. We can't, we can't pay our teachers. We can't pay the lawyers even up to today. Uh, there, it just makes no sense. Why not buy some poor kids a lunch and help the people of our state in a positive way to move forward from the horrible tragedy of the bombing and do something else and concentrate on the positives? Because Terry Nichols is locked up for the rest of his natural life. The rest of his life. And that's not going to change. And that's justice. All the victims and the majority of the victims were there in Denver, saw the justice at that time. And to, to try to have this trial just to kill Terry Nichols uh, at great expense to all the taxpayers of the state uh, just doesn't make sense, and it's not justice. Mr. Nance? Okay, I'll, I'll end the same way I did last time. Who in, who in this book would you tell them they're not, they're not uh, uh, entitled the people that died are pictured in this book are not entitled to a fair trial. And secondly, you said the taxpayer money. That's not where the money's coming from. So the fact that we do have deficit right now in the state of Oklahoma is irrelevant because it's not money that's coming from the taxpayer. It's coming from court fees. And we had plenty of money to pay that $1.7 million, which I think was uh, misused. And you've worked on cases where you've had uh, trials that you had a certain amount of money you were going to get. And that's what should have happened in this, and that's what can happen if we will change defense attorneys and get this show on the road, get a preliminary hearing, and if that goes past that, we'll get a jury put together and we'll have a trial and then let the jury system take its course. We're going to have to wrap it up there. Mr. Nance, Mr. Coyle, thank you both for coming in. Well, Kent and I will have a thanks. few final thoughts when we return. to offer my most sincere congratulations to the firm of Crowe and Dunlavey, the employees and attorneys, uh, profound contributions to the state of Oklahoma for this past century, and I wish you well for this coming century. Thank you. Happy anniversary, Crow Dunlavey, and thank you for 100 years of providing quality legal service to the state of Oklahoma. We wish you much continued success and growth. I enrich our cultural landscape. I help define our quality of life. I am one of 4,000 artists in central Oklahoma who receive support from Allied Arts, this community's united arts organization. I am. I am. I am an Allied artist. All children deserve a life of hope and love. 
but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all of the quality assistance and representation that can be offered in our legal system. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children has over 350 of the best attorneys and volunteers in Oklahoma County who donate their time and services to represent children. For more information, call 405-23-CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. We've been discussing the issue of should Terry Nichols be tried by the state of Oklahoma. Lots of uh, elements here to this case. Yes, uh, a couple of them both uh, deal with the word cost, but in different ways. Uh, there, of course, is will be a huge dollar cost to carrying out this trial. Pe reasonable people can differ uh, about whether it is worth the cost or not. There's another cost that we spent some time talking about, but it is emotional cost. Uh, not only to the witnesses that have to testify, to the uh, uh, victims and the families of the uh, victims uh, that uh, will appear and have to go through this again. Is this, is this trial worth the, that emotional cost? Uh, it, it is a very, very difficult issue and uh, one that uh, w the Supreme Court will have to deal with uh, on, on dollar cost pretty soon and has the power, quite frankly, to dismiss the case if it chooses to do so. I'm not suggesting it will, but it has that power. We'd also like to know what the viewers think. They can visit our website and cast a vote should the state of Oklahoma try Terry Nichols. Go to theverdict.tv. That's www.theverdict.tv. Cast your vote. And as always, you can go to that website and give us an idea for a future show. Kent, about 30 seconds left. I want to, those, are, those are two really good guests. D regardless of how you feel on the issue, I think you've got to appreciate the the uh, methodology that both of them use. Yes, they, they know their subject, and we're pleased to say we're going to have them back on another show, uh, not on Terry Nichols, but on other subjects about which they have differing opinions. Uh, they're both articulate. They're both uh, well-read. Uh, they're both uh, people who are serious about what they say, and yet they can disagree agreeably. We'll see you next time on The Verdict.